Hi, I'm Ann Forrest, and I would like to talk to you about sanitation after big disasters. So if we have a large earthquake, when the ground shakes, pipes break. Remember that, when the ground shakes, pipes break. And if sewer pipes break or water pipes break, we are not going to be able to use our toilets like normal. And that is very, very common and probably will happen. Um, the pipes in the ground need some work. Every time they're dug up for some kind of repair, the city puts back in much more resilient pipe, but to pull all those out and replace them all is just too large of a job for the city to take on at one time. So we are replacing them piecemeal. So um, the problem with, with not having sewer pipes and not having water pipes that are working is that drinking water is super important and also sanitation is really important. Um, it's, it's something that is immediate you're going to need to go to the bathroom the first day after the earthquake, and it's a long-term solution. We can't pull up all those pipes and put down new ones overnight. So it will be days to weeks before any of us have a better sanitation system. So this is something that you and your family need to think about how you're going to handle it at home. And the system I want to talk to you about is the twin bucket toilet system. So just like the name, twin buckets. If your household is coordinated enough to split up these two products, then you're in good shape. And the, the value of, of splitting them up is you can decrease the amount you have to store. Because again, this is a long-term problem. You're going to have to store the byproducts of our human bodies for a long time. So let's talk about urine. This one's the simple one. Urine is mostly water and mostly sterile. What you can do is pee in the bucket and throw it outside. Men, you can just go outside and pee on the ground. But if, you, if you'd like to sit down, this is how you do it. This is a pool noodle or pipe insulation works really well. A long noodle, you're gonna cut it in half and you're gonna make sure that, one, that there's a slit down the length side, just one side of it. This goes around the, the lip of the bucket and it cushions it so that you're not sitting on the lip of a bucket. So this is your urine bucket, your pee bucket. It is good to go just like it is. So you sit down, you do your business, you pee into here, the toilet paper goes into the poo bucket. So we'll talk about that in a second. If you have any water that you're not planning on drinking, like it's coming out of a pool or a hot tub or something like that, you know that you cannot get it clean enough to drink, then add some water to this, swish it around and throw it out on the ground. This will not hurt anything. So that's how you handle pee. This is the stuff we really are concerned about after big disasters. This is what makes people sick. This is where the pathogens are. So we are really, really concerned about containing this and keeping people healthy after a large disaster. So let's talk about how to do that. Again, pool noodle. So you're gonna cushion the rim. And for this one, we're gonna put two bags over it. These are two plastic bags, just regular 13 gallon trash bags, kitchen trash bags. A 13 gallon bag fits really well inside a, inside a five gallon bucket. So I have two of them. I'm gonna put it over the pool noodle just to make sure that stays nice and clean. And then I'm ready to go. So family members are gonna sit down. They're gonna use this poo bucket. They're going to sanitize their hands afterwards because we want everybody to stay nice and healthy. After every time you use these two plastic bags, you're going to put something on top. And this isn't something you need to store. You don't need to buy this stuff. You'll be able to figure out what you can use after a disaster. So some examples are kitty litter, sand, ashes, dirt, flour, you know, a cake mix you're never gonna make, uh, baking soda, dry laundry detergent, anything like that. Just sprinkle it over the top. The reason for that is you're trying to dry out the poo and you're trying to, to keep down the smell. So there's nothing fancy about it. You're just trying to help the system be a little less icky. So family member sits down, does their business, sprinkles a little bit over the top, and you can use these two bags for a while, whether it's one day or three days, depending on the size of your family. You can use these two bags for a while so you won't run out, which is a really good part. So once you think this is full enough, and that's about halfway, you wanna take both bags out. You're gonna squeeze out all the air, because again, this system is really good because it reduces the amount that you have to store. So squeeze out all the air, tie it off, 
and you're going to put it outside. You're going to put it out in a compost bin, a recycle bin, your regular trash can, whatever you have where you can keep it safe from kids and rodents. So the goal is to put this outside and the city will pick it up eventually. That is the guidance to us. They will pick it up eventually. So the other things I have in the, in the twin bucket toilet besides, besides hand sanitizer and those plastic bags, disinfecting wipes, you want to keep this whole system really clean and keep your family healthy. Disposable gloves are a nice idea. Toilet paper, maybe some feminine hygiene products if you want to store those in here. Another option is to buy a toilet seat cover. These are, can be hand, found in camping stores. Um, this is meant to fit on a five gallon bucket. So it works really well. Um, one of the difficult things I think is that once you snap it onto one of these buckets, it's a little difficult to get off. So you need some decent hand strength and it might rip the plastic bags, but um, things like this are available if you're interested. Um, so that's the end of the twin bucket toilet demonstration. I really appreciate you looking through this and trying to keep your family safe. Um, I will put links at the bottom about what the materials are to use and directions. Um, that's it. Thank you very much.